wants to have this experience but can't be here today. Tori, right? Tori. Tori is the manager of the 77. I'm not even sure manager is the right word. Tori is like all things to everybody. And she just she just got yelled at for driving where she shouldn't have driven. I got yelled at for driving. And Josh got yelled at. And, and by the way, the cool moment of today was Tori turning and saying, well, he's a NASCAR race car driver, for God's sake. So leave him alone. <laughs> We're right now going to the Acceleration Club. Acceleration Club is a uh, basically a, a big tent, almost like a suite, and there are 50 plus Ziggler employees there. So we're gonna go do a meet and greet, sign some autographs, see them before we get really busy uh, with, with the race. Uh, they moved the schedule up, so we got a little bit of a crunch time zone that we can make this happen, but we have two stops today. First one is the Acceleration Club, second one is the suite inside the track. Uh, that's where Mel Tucker, Tom Izzo, Aaron Ziggler are gonna be. So. We're, uh, we're excited for a busy day here. Our day uh, our day doesn't begin when we, when we take the green flag. Our day begins several hours in advance. So, first time with this new car that we're racing this track, we just unloaded a little bit off. We were tight. Basically, the car wasn't turning how I wanted it to. So we're making a pretty big change. And all of our data, our simulation, all the computer work the guys did in the shop yesterday or last night says it's going to work. Sometimes the simulation can be a little bit off, though. We found that this year, so uh, we're, we're taking a chance. We're hopeful that it's going to work. So, so those, Josh, are all the tangibles. Those are the things you can control and you have to endure. There's a little bit of luck. There so today, you have Tom Izzo and you have Mel Tucker, yeah. the two most infamous sports coaches in, in, in athletics and sports. Uh, all you got to do is high five them, handshake, uh, ask for their, uh, you know, get, get, get them to uh, put hands on the car or something like that. And uh, that P19. Yeah. You know, we were, I, I was fortunate to meet both of them on Friday. On, yeah, Friday. Yeah. And just talking to Tom and Mel, it was amazing. I mean, Tom was amazed by the car. I wanted to ask him more questions. He asked me so many questions about the car and the interior. We took the car to the MSC Red Corner. So Tom was amazed how small the interior of the car is. I mean, these cars, they're big, heavy cars from inside, but you feel them claustrophobic. You, you shared with us on the podcast that you actually think uh, he's claustrophobic. He said you that. Wouldn't get the car. He told me that. He told me that. I asked him, I said, you can get the car if you want. But it's so tight getting in and out. You know, this car's on the door. So you crawl through the window. We have the big seat with the big headrest. So you don't just slide in. You have to like work your body around the headrest and the steering wheel comes off. And one thing he did not like was I told him, I said, the steering wheel detaches. If there's a mechanical problem with the steering wheel, this detachment tool, you can't get out. You physically cannot get out of the car if the steering wheel's stuck on. Now, knock on wood, that's never happened in NASCAR. The steering wheel has never been able to not come off. But if it would, that'd be a little scary because you are so tight, everything's so tight in there, and the seat wraps around you, you can't just roll out of the seat. I mean, you literally have containment, so I mean, we're pulling a lot of chains around this track. Everything is built inside the car to support my body. How are you doing? Good, man. Good to see you again. And me and my friend Jesse snuck in. We snuck into some of these suites. We snuck into suites up there. I remember it was it was dark. Nobody was here. And uh, nine years later, we're in the Cup Series race here. It's just a camp here in the trailer. Yeah. We stayed inside the track at night. Yeah, fun. that was fun. It was a long time ago. Yeah, it was. Nine years ago, wow. So I'm actually walking to the hauler. I'll give you guys a quick tour of the hauler, and then I meet with my team. I eat, but I meet with my team. We made a very big change after qualifying. A big change. So I'm just gonna show you the room real quick. I am mic'd up, guys, just so you know. I'm just showing him the room real quick. What's up, guys? This is more or less our engineering area during the race weekend. The other one was geared towards hospitality. This is a little bit more geared towards 
strategy meetings, meetings with my crew chief, engineer. It's super serious. Up it is super serious. serious. Nice. My teammate, Seriously. Corey. Seriously. You guys look like you're changing the world right now. We're, to. we're creating a plan. No, we are. That's what we're doing. So. Oh, we got a plan. Now we just got to go see if it'll work. Well, when this works, you'll see the radar. Yeah. This is the radar. Ours isn't working. And it, it works for like a minute that it stops. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. If you look north, it's flat. Yeah. So Josh, if we get if we get back out there, uh, how does the weather change your strategy? Um. So. Oh, that's good. You can have a different strategy if you think you're racing the halfway point. Like if they go green and there's more rain in the forecast, but we have an hour and a half until it hits. You might not think you're going to race the whole race. Your strategy might change, which will affect your pit stops, when you pit, um, the entire strategy. So I guess the, the weather just kind of dictates that, the radar. Sometimes you make a guess, and sometimes it's accurate, or sometimes it's not. You know, if you're racing to what you think is halfway, then you keep going, it can hurt you, um, or vice versa. If you don't think you're racing halfway, and the radar looks clear, and the cell forms, uh, that can also hurt you. So. The track conditions are going to be a little bit different too. This is the first time it rained all, all week, so the track is kind of back to what we call we call it a green track. There's not a lot of rubber on the track; it's kind of been washed away. Um, so the track's probably going to be pretty fast here right away. And if, if it stays cloudy, I don't really know what the track is going to do. To be honest, the track kind of needs heat for some of the PJ1 to work. PJ1 is the sticky stuff they put in the top lane. Um, you can see. There's like a screen all that's a bad image because it's all yeah, dark. Yeah. The PJ1 is it's just spray that they spray in the top lane of the track. It's like if you ever spray coke on the on, on, on the floor, mm -hmm. you step in it, it's sticky. Mm -hmm. That's almost what the PJ1 does, but it lasts long. Like okay. So there's extra grip up there, True. but it needs heat to activate. So with it being cloudy right now and it just rained, that PJ1 is not in yet. So um, I don't know, lots of unknowns, but we're all in the same boat here. How does it affect the car specifically? We don't quite know yet. I can the track's probably going to be a little loose right now. Yesterday, and I'm only saying that because I raced the race yesterday. Uh, my race the Xfinity Series race yesterday. As the track got hotter, the, the, the car actually got tighter. So, with the track being a little bit cooler right now, it might be faster and grippier, but it might be a little bit looser too. I think we might start. I don't think we're going to get the whole thing in. But I think we'll start. Yeah. Yep. If we get to halfway and it starts downpouring, they'll just say, "All right, this is the end of the race." If we only get to a quarter of the way in, so we need to come back tomorrow and finish the race. Okay. Got it. And then you start in the same positions you started today, or where you left off. You would start where you left off. Okay. Oh, International Speedway getting ready to go for 400 miles here. Zeke Lauder Group, Michigan State on the hood. The car looks awesome. 
Both coaches are going to say driver start your engine here pretty soon. Uh, a little bit of a rain delay, so we're about half an hour behind schedule, maybe a little bit more than that. But good news is there is sun out, the track is dry, so I think we're going to get this thing in today. How do you feel, buddy? Felt good. It was a good race. It was a good race. That gain of 14 spots, I think. That's so awesome. That was a, you know, we needed that point there for sure. That's awesome. And the car doesn't have a scratch. No, no, so that was I, know, I get it from some people saying, you can just go out there and beat the hell out of the car. But we are a small team, so when we have a good point stay and the car's clean, that's huge. We've had a we've had a rough couple of weeks. Last week was a good week, but before that, we had four bad weeks in a row. Kind of everything not our doing, like wrong place, wrong time. So to have two good weeks in a row, 22nd last week, and then with Ziggler.com on the car, but this week with MSU and Ziggler on the hood, um, 221, that's, that's a good day for us. We're, you know, we're a small team. I mean, we finished 20th, the team with five times their employees. You know, they, they finished 20th, we finished 21st, so not a bad day. Cheer wine, which they're not very well known up here, but it's basically a cherry soda, or I'll drink a Mountain Dew. Um, but good day, yeah, P21, great points today for us. We needed that after the last couple of weeks, so it was incredible to have Michigan State University here. Mount Sucker, Tom Mizzo, they gave the command to start the race. That was really cool to hear that. And uh, I mean, to come on P21 in front of the MSU Ziegler audience who was here, I mean, we had over 100 people here. Uh, pretty good weekend, so. Thank you, Ziggler Auto Group. Without you, without Aaron Ziggler, this would not be possible. 